In this video, I'll use some of Profile Builder's preset profiles and assemblies to demonstrate the basics of what the extension can do. I have SketchUp open with this model of a room. The entire room is a group. To open the Profile dialog, I can choose Extensions, Profile Builder, Profile Dialog, or I can click the first icon on the Profile Builder toolbar. The profile shape that appears is either a default preset or the shape I most recently used. To see more preset shapes, I'll click the Profile Browser icon. Then I'll click the Sample Folders icon. This opens a folder called Profile Examples, where I have a selection of several types of profile shapes. I'll choose Base, which now appears in the Profile dialog. The width and height of this base molding profile are listed here, and I'll change the height to 12 inches and press Tab, just to make the molding easier to see in the room. Because width and height are linked, the width updates as well. The red dot indicates the placement point, the point of the profile that will follow the profile path. For a base molding, the bottom left placement makes sense, because this point will follow along the edges of the floor. To add the base molding to the room, I'll click the Build icon. I'll go clockwise, clicking points along the floor of the room, defining the profile path, and the molding is added. I want to end the first molding at the doorway, so I'll click either the Escape key or Return or Enter. Then I'll pick up on the other side of the doorway, clicking points along the walls and bay window, pressing Escape or Enter again when I reach this doorway. When finished, each section of molding is created as its own group. These objects created from profiles are called profile members. For a crown molding, I'll search again in the same folder and load Architrave 1. Again, I'll change the profile height to make this profile easier to see. The placement point is still at the bottom left corner. So when I click Build and start dragging out this molding, the molding goes above the top of the wall. I could finish and undo and start over, but I can also change the placement point while the preview is showing. Pressing the Home key scrolls through placement points, so I'll press Home until the placement point is top left which I can see both in the Profile dialog and on the Profile preview itself. When I click to continue along the path, the entire profile updates with the new placement. If I click an incorrect path point, I can easily go back as many steps as I need by pressing the Delete or Backspace key. And when I have just one more segment to go, and I want the profile member to be a closed loop, I can right-click and choose Close the Path. The direction of the path is important. When I go clockwise, and I'm facing toward the direction of the path, the left placement point is on my left. If I undo the crown molding and try again, going counterclockwise, left and right are switched. But while the profile member is not yet complete, I can click the mirror icon and get the results I want. Just like with SketchUp's Follow Me tool, in Profile Builder I can manually drag along a path like we just saw, or I can select the path in advance. I'll undo the crown molding again, then open the room group for editing. I'll trace an edge along the ceiling to create the ceiling face, select the face, and use Control or Command X to cut it. Then I'll close the group and use Edit, Paste in Place to bring the ceiling back, this time outside the group. I'll select the face, which means its edges will be used as the path. I'll toggle off mirror, then click Build Along Path. This creates the entire profile member all at once. I'll erase the ceiling face to make the molding easier to see. I can also select in advance the edges of the path. I'll keep the same profile to use for a chair rail and press Home to move the placement point back to bottom left. I want the bottom of the chair rail to be three feet from the floor, so I'll set the vertical offset to 36 inches. I'll hide the base molding groups to make the next steps easier to see. I'll edit the room group again and shift select the edges along the floor. There are three sets of connected edges to accommodate the doorways and windows. I'll copy these, close the group, and paste in place. Now these edges are selected. When I click Build Along Path Now, all three chair rail profile members are created, starting three feet from the floor. This multi-path extrude is something I couldn't do this easily with the Follow Me tool. One of these profile members is correct, but the others are facing inward instead of outward. For any profile member that needs to be mirrored, 
I can right-click on it and choose Profile Builder Reverse Selected. In addition to 2D profiles like we just saw, Profile Builder also works with assemblies. These are customizable parametric objects composed of profiles and components, such as fences, walls, or railings that can be placed along a 2D or 3D path. I have a new model open with a piece of terrain. The border around the yellow surface is where I want to place a fence. I'll click the Assembly dialog icon, then open the Assembly browser to the Samples folder. I'll choose the Picket Fence. Assemblies have a variety of options you can set. In this case, the two profile members are the top and bottom fence rails, and under Component, I have the posts. I'll keep all of the default settings. To select the path, I'll first double-click the yellow surface, then shift-click the surface to unselect it, leaving all of the edges selected. Then I'll click Build Along Path. The fence is placed, and I can zoom in to see how it follows the 3D path. I can then make changes to this fence. I'll make the overall height 6 feet, and click the check icon to apply. Then I can go into Component and change the post spacing to 6 inches. With the fence selected, when I click Apply Assembly Attributes, the changes are made. Or I can replace the fence altogether. I'll go back to the library without saving changes and pick the lattice fence. I'll select the existing fence and apply assembly attributes again. And after a few seconds, the entire fence is lattice. Assemblies and all of their options will be covered in later videos. In the next video, I'll discuss how to create your own profiles and use them to create profile members.